right now, there are eight billion people in the world. That is a huge number. Like, it's a huge number. Do you have any idea how big that number is? Let me try to help. Just put it into perspective. If you decided that you wanted to go meet every single person on the planet, and you were only gonna meet them for one second, and you said to yourself, I'm not gonna stop until I've met them all, it would take you 253 and a half years to spend one second with everybody who's on the planet right now. <gasps> Eight billion people. Now, of those 8 billion, 335 million, give or take a couple, live right here in the good old U.S. of A. 335 million, also a huge number. Try to help you understand that number. Everybody with me, take a deep breath. Ready? Breathe. And really, <sighs> lovely. Now do that 335 million times and it would take you about 50 years. Crazy. Now, we live in Arizona, Yeehaw. right? Seven and a half million people live right here in Arizona, which means this, if everybody in Arizona were to look in their couch and find a penny and give it to you, you could buy yourself a Tesla. Sweet, right? And of those seven and a half million people that live right here in Arizona, about five million live in the greater Phoenix Valley. Five million people. That could fill up State Farm Stadium where the Cardinals play 70 times, which means if the Cardinals sell out every game, it would take them almost nine full seasons to fit the whole population of the greater Phoenix area. I say all that to say this, you guys, there are people everywhere, everywhere. So many people. But if we're to believe the experts when they're talking about, well, you, <laughs> then it's kind of interesting that there's never been a generation ever that would describe itself as being as lonely as you, which is weird because there's people everywhere. But you're not lonely because you're alone, are you? No, unless you're that one guy watching alone in an igloo in the North Pole. And if that's the case, I, I'm sorry. Like, you get a pass on this. And also, how does your phone work all the way out there? Anyway, it doesn't matter. The point is, what's the deal? Why are so many of us feeling so alone, even though there's so many people around? Could it have just a little something to do with maybe the madness of our world? Like, we're all just running so fast, we're so distracted, so busy, we're so overstimulated, we just miss everybody around us. Maybe. Or maybe it's that the constant screen time, right? It just, it just creates these like fabricated relationships and these weird connected but alone vibes that we get. Maybe. But that wasn't my story. No, my story actually is a little different. As I look back over my life, the times that I felt most lonely, they were all marked by one specific thing, fear. I spent a lot of time lonely because I was scared of something. Maybe I was scared of like, failing or being rejected or looking dumb or coming off as a weirdo, any number of things. I just, I spent a lot of my junior high years a little bit lonely because I was scared and I bet I'm not alone. I bet someone else out there feels like they're a little lonely because there's some fear of anything. Maybe I just mentioned it or maybe you got your own thing. But if that's you, I just wanna share a little story from the Bible. It's one that over the years has encouraged me and I think it could encourage you too. It's from the Old Testament, the book of 1 Kings chapter 19. It's about a, this guy named Elijah. Elijah was a prophet. Now, that's kind of like saying Elijah is like an influencer. He says things on behalf of God, though. And a lot of people listen. A lot of people think this guy's pretty cool. His life impacts their lives. Like, pretty big deal, Elijah was. But being in his position, he also like ticked off a bunch of people, uh, namely the king and queen. 
they kind of wanted to kill him. So verse three tells us he uh, fled. He like feared for his life and he ran. He ran all the way with this other guy, kind of his assistant, to a place called Beersheba. And then he realized, we gotta split up. I gotta go my own way, you gotta go yours, because our lives are in danger. So they did, they split up. And Elijah traveled another full day into the desert. He found a bush and he lay down under it. And this is where it kind of gets sad, because Elijah started to feel desperate. He started praying to God. He said, God, I've had enough take my life. You guys, that's dark. And he laid down and he went to sleep. And the next thing he knows, he's getting a tap on the shoulder and there's a guy standing there that he described as an angel. And the angel said, get up and eat because the journey you're going on, you need your strength for. So he did, he got up, he ate the food, he drank the drink and he walked and he walked and he walked for 40 days and 40 nights all by himself, almost a month and a half. And finally he arrives at his destination, the mountain of God, Mount Horeb. He climbs in a cave and after that long, he just wants to rest so he goes to sleep. And that is when God starts showing up. God says to him, Elijah, what are you doing here? Elijah's ready to talk. And he says, God, I've, I've done everything right. I followed you, I tried to get other people to follow you, but your people have lost their minds. They're killing off all the prophets and now I'm the only one left and they're gonna come kill me too. And God said to him, get up. I want you to go stand on this mountain because I'm gonna pass by you. So Elijah did. He walked out and soon thereafter, there came this unbelievable wind. The wind shook the mountain, it shook the rocks under his feet. It said it broke the mountain apart. But God was not in the wind. Then there was an earthquake, shook everything all around, but God was not in the earthquake. And then there came a fire all around Elijah, but God was not in the earthquake or the fire. And after the fire, there came a gentle whisper. And when Elijah heard the whisper, he covered his face with his cloak out of respect and awe. And he walked to the mouth of the cave. And God said again, Elijah, what are you doing here? And Elijah tells God again, God, I've done everything right. I tried to get other people to do the right thing too but your people have lost their mind. They've killed all the prophets. And now I'm the last one left and they're gonna kill me too. They had the same conversation twice, but this time God takes it a different direction. He said, Elijah, get up and go. Go back the way you came. I have work for you. I have work for you to do. He tells him what he wants him to do. And then he said, oh, by the way, you're not alone. For I have reserved 7,000 others just like you, who refuse to do what the king and queen want and bow to other gods. You're not alone. It's kind of weird to me, they had the same conversation twice. Exactly the same. God says, Elijah, what are you doing? And Elijah tells him just what he's doing. I'm running away because I've done all the right things, but they're, they're trying to kill me. He had one here, a conversation, and he had one here. What happened here? What happened in the middle of those two conversations is really significant. God whispered truth to Elijah. You guys, today I want you to realize something, okay? Elijah was scared. Elijah ran away, rightly so, he was being hunted, but that scared place that he got, it drove him to this loneliness. It drove him, it drove him to this depression and despair and eventually these like suicidal thoughts and prayers. But hear this. At his lowest moment, he was still willing to put his faith into action. He was still willing to go on this long journey because he knew God had something for him there, that God wanted to have an experience with him someplace. And good thing he did, good thing he didn't miss it because he learned something. By the way, sidebar, sign up for camp. Sign up for camp because I just wonder how many of us need to take our next step of putting our faith into action and taking a journey to where we know God is gonna speak really clearly into our lives. 
Maybe that's your next step. Sign up. Back to Elijah. So Elijah gets into this place where God is whispering these things to him, and it's a great reminder for him. Two things I want you to know that Elijah found out from God that I think, honestly, I think you need to find out too. It's this, God is with you and he never left. And there are others like you. You guys, today you could be lonely for a number of reasons. There's, there's so many different reasons you might feel loneliness today, and it's, it's not probably because you're alone. If you're anything like me or Elijah, maybe it has something to do with fear. You're just scared of rejection or losing a relationship or being weird. I get it. But you guys, I want you to hear God's voice loud and clear today. God is with you and he's never left, and there are others like you. The Bible tells us that the devil is trying to steal and kill and destroy your life. Do you wanna know one of the easiest ways that he can accomplish that? By isolating you from God and from others. So here's my challenge to you. Don't let him do that. Don't let him get you isolated and feeling lonely. You know, I bet, that the vast majority of you out there today, you believe in God. But I wonder how many of you just believe God. Because here's the deal. The devil's gonna try to trick you. He's gonna tell you that God's forgotten about you. He's not even there. He's gonna tell you that nobody will ever understand you. Nobody gets you, you're weird. But you know what? What if you didn't listen to him because you chose to listen to the voice of God when he whispers into your life. Hey, I just want you to do one thing with me right now. I'm gonna put up on the screen just a few things that God has told us about himself in scripture. I want you to sit totally silently. I want you to read these things to yourself as they come up quietly. And I want you to remember that this is the voice of God whispering truth into your life. Okay, one last thing. Look around you. Look at the, the faces of the people who are near you right now. I don't know if there's three people in your group or 15, it doesn't matter, either way. Remember that God has put people around you right now, right where you are. He is reminding you that there are other students, that there is a coach, that there is a church that deeply cares for you. Yeah, you and we're for you. Look, this is a crazy world. It is a mad, 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 mad world, and it only gets crazier if we feel lonely. And when we decide to believe what the devil tells us, we believe his tricks when he confuses us with God's forgotten you and you're a weirdo. You guys, it makes it so tough. We have to hear the whisper of God through it all just like Elijah learned in his loneliness. God is with you and he's never left. And there are others like you. Christ and our difference makers, that is the truth for each of you to take into your next week. It's true today and it will be true all week and for your whole life. Live like that because you matter to God and you matter to us. Thank you.